Okay, I'm, I'm showing you photo one from State's Composite. Tell us, what is this a photo of? So this is the identification photo that's basically just showing uh, from about the level of the collarbones up. And this is George Torres? Yes. Did you note uh, any uh, signs of injury in this photo? So there's some um, ecchymosis uh, around the left eye. This picture, it's a little bit hard to see, but I think there's another one coming up. There's also an area of ecchymosis up here on the left side of the forehead with also some swelling um, associated with that. Um, the lips have some um, contusions and small lacerations. And then on the left shoulder here, you can see a little bit of uh, some ecchymosis here. Or again, ecchymosis are kind of like big bruises. Turning to photo two from State's Composite. What are we looking at in this photograph? So this is his right arm near the elbow. Um, and right here you can see this kind of darker area. So this looks similar to an abrasion, but it's actually, um, it's what's called drying artifact. And again, this is one of the reasons that I think that he was in that suitcase for a little bit longer. Most likely that was an, a pressure point where part of that suitcase was uh, resting on his uh, elbow in that area. And then after death, that tissue dries out and, and that's the discoloration that you're seeing there. So here you can see a little bit better, um, I don't know if you can get a feeling for this, but this area is what we call edema or swelling. So this whole area is edema, it's a little bit discolored, so ecchymosis, and then again, really at the corner of the eye here, um, you can see that darker discoloration. And so that's, those are injuries from blunt force trauma. Four from the composite. So this is the left shoulder and arm. So again, you can see this kind of red to purple area. So this is all ecchymosis. And then a couple of linear abrasions or scratches. States five from the composite. This is the same area, just a little bit closer up, so you can see uh, this whole area of ecchymosis. It's a little bit variegated, differential in color, but again, that's all blunt force trauma. And um, what part of the body is this we're looking at? Uh, this is the left shoulder. States six from the composite? That's the same area, but uh, in this picture we have a scale, or the ruler. And uh, why do we use scales rulers? That's just to give an idea of how big the area is or how large the injury is. States 7 from the composite. So this is the left forearm and hand. And you can see the area right here that's a little bit uh, red to purple. And then also right here on the left hand, right here and here. Those are all areas of ecchymosis, again, blood force trauma. States eight from the composite. Again, the left arm just from a little bit of a different angle, so you can see, and a little bit with the elbow too here, but you can see all these areas. <coughs> Ecchymosis. Four from the composite. Okay, so this is the elbow. 
And now looking at the left hand, a little bit closer up, so you can kind of see a little bit better these areas of ecchymosis. And again, the left hand just closer up. States 11 in the composite. So now we're looking at the back, and you can see that there are these uh, linear um, abrasions in the mid-back. Are those scratch marks? For they could be scratch marks. They could also be um, blunt impact, um, more of just a straight-on blunt impact, especially being in that suitcase um, if there are objects in there. What is the discoloration that we see uh, around his shoulders and, um, and then uh, and some other uh, spots on his back as well? Sure. So you're talking about this area? Yes. So that's called liver mortis or lividity, and that's one of the changes that we see, again, after death. And basically what that is, is it's postmortem after death, settling of blood um, in the blood vessels. And so it's dependent on gravity, and it's dependent on the person's position. So what I mean by that is we're seeing it on his back because after the time of death, at some point in time, he was more uh, positioned um, on, on his back. And the areas that are lighter, that's because for a couple of reasons. It could be the position of the body, meaning that it's not in the you know, gravity dependent position, or there could be something pressing on it. So either one of those. So those are those linear abrasions, just shown a little bit closer up. States 13 from the composite. And the same, uh, but with a scale. States 14. So now you're seeing the left side of his back and also the back of his left arm. And you can see these areas here of ecchymoses, and these are a lot darker than some of the others that we've seen. Um, one of the things that I did is I looked underneath the skin in these areas because it's, they're so much darker and so much more dense. So I wanted to see if there was injury of the deeper tissues. So these areas are associated with hemorrhage or bleeding into the skeletal muscle, so the deeper tissues. And so that's just indicating more force applied to that area. And when you did your uh, internal exam, uh, did you examine this area and did that inform your findings? Yes. States 15 from the composite. And that's showing those areas a little bit closer up. So you can see that they're much more dense. There's at least three distinct areas here. Um, that could, there could be more than three impacts, but there's at least three separate ones that can be seen. States 16 from the composite. This is just showing the upper back and the back of the neck. Uh, we've got a linear abrasion right here on the back of the neck, and these were the ones shown in the earlier pictures. States 17 from the composite. And this is just showing the same area of the back and the back of the arm, but just at a different angle. Uh, did you identify? 
I can't give you an exact number. Again, you know, you can have multiple impacts in a very close area, so it can be hard to to discern each one. They can overlay each other, or they can be so close to each other. Um, so, but at least you know, five to six, most likely more than that. And when you were uh, going through your body chart as well, uh, and I guess we also saw uh, some of it uh, photographically as uh, you also mentioned um, uh, impact to the left side of the head. Yes. And I believe that was subgeleal? Uh, subgeleal. So kind of similar to what I was describing on the back, um, I looked at the um, underside of the scalp. And so in those areas on the left side of his forehead where there was the edema, when we reflect or we fold the scalp over, there was hemorrhage or bleeding that was went through the entire scalp and was uh, deposited on the skull. Um, there was no associated skull fracture and there was no bleeding inside of the skull, but it was all in the scalp and uh, deposited on the outer surface of the skull. So under the skin, but not under the skull. Correct. Your Honor, I have no further questions at this time. Thank you.